Okay, try to figure out what exactly this is. This strange alien looking green tentacle that you see in this video. Although I guess I might have spoiled this in the title of the video. This unusual creature is technically a super organism made entirely out of tiny, tiny worms. Or technically nematodes that produce this very unusual behavior. These microscopic worms that do usually require a microscope to be seen form these relatively large towers, breathing towers that start to move around and actually start acting like a single organism. Which is why these structures are technically a super organism, because they basically start behaving like a larger animal. And well, hello info person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a new study from the Max Planck Institute of Animal Behavior that for the first time ever confirms the existence of these structures and explains why they seem to exist and why these worms are able to form it. In essence, we're presenting what scientists usually refer to as towering behavior. Something that does happen naturally in certain species, but something that is usually difficult to explain and even more difficult to detect. But this has been previously observed in a lot of other species. The most famous example is the slime mold. You can learn about slime mold in some of the previous videos in the description, but here this is probably one of the best examples of something tiny forming a superorganism. We also know that certain types of ants, such as fire ants, can also occasionally form superorganism structures, as well as certain types of spider mites. But this unusual towering behavior is actually still relatively rare in nature. But when it comes to worms, it's really only been observed in lab conditions. And specifically it's been observed when these worms try to escape certain environments, such as in hospitable conditions inside the petri dish. And so it was always believed that some of these worms potentially use this as a kind of an escape mechanism. But that was of course just an assumption based on some of the earlier observations. Mostly because none of this has ever been really observed in nature. But a few months ago all of this changed. And that's because Daniela Perez and the researchers from the Max Planck Institute of Annual Behavior decided to place a bunch of cameras in an orchard near the institute in order to observe what happens mostly around rotting fruit. And I think here they mostly focused on pears. And to their surprise they were able to capture first ever natural towering behavior produced by an extremely famous worm. A tiny tiny worm referred to as Cenorhabditis, with one of the most famous species being Cenorhabditis elegans, also known as C. elegans. Literally the most important worm in biology and one of the most studied species in nature. A genus of nematodes or tiny worms that generally prefer to live in extremely bacteria rich environments, mostly because that's essentially their food. And so here they prefer to live in various compost piles, around various decaying dead animals, and of course inside rotting fruit. And so in this case when the scientists pointed their digital microscopes at a lot of these rotting apples and pears, they finally caught the glimpse of these living worm based towers. Which is essentially what you're seeing in this video. And though these are super super tiny, they're definitely much much larger than the worms themselves. And what you're seeing here is a super organism. It is essentially formed from hundreds of individual worms, all of them basically coming together and all of them acting as one. With each of these clusters essentially reaching out these unusual exploratory arms, while also being able to bridge gaps between larger spaces and even reacting to touch when they felt a glass pick. And what's really strange in this case is that they literally acted like a much larger organism as if this was just a single body. They were able to react to various stimuli, with the tower itself being able to sense, being able to grow, in this case by basically attaching even more worms, and respond immediately to a lot of different stimuli. And more importantly, they basically had these very bizarre tips that were formed by other worms that were used as a kind of a sensor to probe the environment. Here's actually one good example with a fly in this case, with these worms actively seeking out the fly and trying to attach to it in the process. We'll come back to this in a second because we do have a really good explanation for why they did this. With this really really cool video showing us how this very strange super organism seems to wrap around a tiny tiny toothbrush bristle which basically acted as a scaffold with the entire superorganism, then using it as a kind of a spine. And so in this case, the bristle from the toothbrush actually formed part of this superorganism. 
which by itself really sounds like something out of science fiction and something that you would see in some kind of an alien movie. Yet all of this was real, it was captured, and it literally happens all around us, pretty much at all times. But we don't really see it very much, because here it's still pretty small. And the question was of course, okay so what are they doing and why are they doing it? With a third question that's still kind of unanswered being how. And the question of why seems to be pretty easy. Normally, in most nematodes, we actually classify them as either being phoretic or necromantic. And this is based on their relationship with the host where they live. A phoretic worm usually rides on its host until it finds a favorable environment, where it then separates in order to consume more bacteria and in order to then reproduce, create a new tower and continue the cycle by finding a new host. This is actually what you see in here. In this case, these worms are essentially trying to connect to one of these flies in order to continue the cycle somewhere else when the fly lands on some other object. Then we have the necromantic worms that normally live in the host until the host dies and then basically live off the bacteria on the host. But in many cases, a lot of these worms seem to actually do at least a bit of both. They can survive on that host and they can also survive by attaching to some kind of an animal in order to move somewhere else. And for these tiny, tiny creatures, the only successful way to do this is by doing this. This towering behavior seems to be indeed not an escape mechanism, but a means for a mass transit. So this is not just some kind of a random event or a random behavior. This is a very coordinated structure with a very specific purpose. And in this case, it's a mutually beneficial purpose that seems to benefit most of these worms, except for a few stragglers that are left behind. And though it has been used to escape certain environments, in this case, this is also the main means of transportation, especially when the main food source, in this case bacteria, runs out. And this is when these tiny round worms start to crawl toward one another and start to build these wriggling towers. But there was actually a major mystery. In this case, for this particular worm, this actually only happens during a very specific step of reproduction. And to be more specific, this was only visible in a single species and during the same period of development, referred to as dower, a type of a larval stage that usually lasts for a very short period of time before these worms become adults. And so during this larval stage, a lot of these worms create these structures, but once they reach a new environment, they basically form into adult form, create babies, and those babies restart the towering process once again. But in this experiment, or in this study, researchers were able to create something else. They basically formed artificial conditions in order to force other worms, and in this case the famous C. elegans, to also assemble these structures, but even without the larval stage. And so the lab version of these worms were essentially encouraged to produce the towers all together. And interestingly, one of the main discoveries in this case was the fact that these worms don't actually have any hierarchical structure. They're all more or less egalitarian. Instead of, for example, having certain types of worms do all the work, like for example in ants this would be the worker ants, here every single roundworm contributed to the tower. Which suggests that this behavior is not specific to the larval stage, but is indeed more or less generalized. And it seems to be a built-in behavior that seems to be present in a lot of roundworms. But mostly for this unusual behavior of group movement essentially to move to favorable conditions when the current environment becomes more or less unfavorable. But despite these super exciting discoveries, there are still a lot of questions. As a matter of fact, there are more questions than answers. For example, how exactly do the worms do this? How exactly do all of these worms become an individual and how do they act as a single organism? How do they communicate? How do they know when to escape the environment? And how do they even know when to detach from the bottom in order to move somewhere else? Right now the suggestion is that this is some kind of a chemical behavior, potentially using pheromones, but all of this is just a guess. There is absolutely no explanation on how exactly this is done. But this definitely shows us a completely new behavior where animals, actual animals, even though these are really tiny, are able to move together by basically combining into one. Although naturally, until future experiments and until future observations, we're not really going to know much more. This is still a brand new discovery and something we've never seen before. And so in this case, only future observations and future studies are going to tell us a little bit more about all of this. 
But until then, and until we learn something else, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics, including slime mold, in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon, where you can find even more videos, and videos you've probably never seen before, including videos with no ads. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership with additional footage only visible to members, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.